Right now at noon, the dangerous heat wave has arrived, packing temperatures in the mid 90s. How long the intense heat sticks around, especially with several major week, uh, events this weekend. This man just faced a judge accused of kidnapping and assaulting a woman and forcing that nine hour standoff in this Charlotte neighborhood. We'll bring you the latest. Plus, trying to ease tensions between police and suspects. The new program using virtual reality to train officers on how to defuse situations. You're watching Eyewitness News. We're live at noon. And we start with that dangerous heat in our area. Great to have you with us. I'm Paul Boyd. We're talking about temperatures in the mid 90s for the next seven days. This is a worry for many in our community this weekend, while others will just try to stay cool at a lake, river, or swimming pool. Let's go over to meteorologist Jacqueline Shear. Jacqueline, these temperatures are not normal for May, correct? They are not. You know, we should be uh, about 10, 15 degrees cooler this time of year than what we're seeing. Right now, it's already 89 degrees in Charlotte this lunch hour. A few hours ago, we were already in the 80s this morning, so we're not getting a lot of relief in the morning either. That's something you want to be mindful of throughout the next few days. A lot of folks probably planning and getting their yard work done here ahead of Memorial Day, and really, we're not getting much relief at any time of the day. So 89 degrees right now. As we get into the afternoon, though, of course, getting quite a bit worse. We're talking about those mid 90s by 4 p.m. We hit our high today of 94 degrees. You also can't really expect any relief in the term in terms of rainfall here. We're staying dry all throughout the next few uh, days and the next few hours here as well. Now here's a look at those seven day temperatures. Not much relief on the way anytime soon as we're staying in about the mid 90s all the way through the rest of that seven day forecast. This is one of the hottest and longest stretches of temperatures that we've seen in May. Possibly Possibly it, since records have been uh, keep, have been kept here in the Charlotte area. We're going to take a look at when those rain chances might pop up coming up in just a few minutes. All right, and if you plan on going to the lake this weekend, officers will be patrolling to enforce drinking and boating laws and make sure children are wearing life jackets. You'll see boat patrols on Lake Wiley, Lake Norman, and the Catawba River. Last month, swift water rescue teams from across the state trained along the Catawba River. If you download our app right now, you can keep a close eye on the dangerous heat this weekend. The WSOC TV weather app is free to download within that Apple and Google Play stores. This man just faced a judge accused of kidnapping and assaulting a woman and causing that nine hour standoff in South Charlotte yesterday. Chopper 9, of course, flew over the standoff unfolding at the Aurora Station Apartments just off of Sharon Brook Drive. Channel 9's Gene Esposito was in the courtroom just moments ago when Luis Pineda Acheta faced a judge. Yeah, I was in court in the past three hours when Luis Pineda and Chanta faced a judge for the very first time. He is facing pretty serious charges, accused of violently attacking a woman this week and causing an hours long standoff with police. This is some video yesterday afternoon when police were involved in a nine hour long standoff in South Charlotte. We captured it from Chopper 9 Sky Zoom. Police say that Pineda and Chanta was hiding in a space between a fireplace at the Aurora Station apartments off Sharon Brook Road. They say he eventually gave up because he became overheated and had to be taken to the hospital. Police say he was wanted for a crime that happened on Tuesday. They say Pineda and Chanta forced a woman into his car and then drove her somewhere. Then police say he tied her up with a plastic rope and strangled her. Benyetta Encheta is facing several charges, including kidnapping. Today, a judge set his bond to $70,000 and told him he couldn't have contact with the victim. They also said he had to be put on electronic monitor. In Charlotte, I'm Gina Esposito, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. All right, thank you, Gina. Meantime, in the last 90 minutes, the judge delayed closing arguments in the trial of a former elementary school bus driver. Caldwell County deputies say Nancy Austin shot and killed her daughter's boyfriend back in December 2013. She took the stand earlier this week and said she killed Dylan Short in her front yard because she was worried he was about to assault her daughter. Channel 9's Dave Faraday is inside that courtroom right now and he's going to break down the very latest on this case today at 5 o'clock. New for you at noon, police have identified the man they say they arrested after a major drug bust up in Davidson. Police believe Kyle Gresham was selling cocaine, meth and LSD. They found the drugs and $3,000 inside the home on Delberg Street yesterday morning. That home is just blocks away from Davidson College and an elementary school. Gresham faces nine drug-related charges. 
Police say a six-year-old was running to catch the school bus when a car hit them. It happened this morning along David Cox Road in North Charlotte. Police say the driver stayed at that crash scene to help. The school bus was not stopped when the crash happened, and that child is in the hospital right now recovering, we're told. Two people, one of them a teen, was shot in Chester last night. It happened yesterday evening on Jeter Street. Police told our Greg Suskin it stemmed from an ongoing dispute they were having. No one's been arrested at this point, but investigators say they have some very good leads. SLED is helping in that investigation. A couple is facing more charges after a police chase and search over in Alexander County. Deputies say Marty Teague broke into a building and stole a car. You see images of him there. They searched for him for weeks and eventually spotted him on Church Road last week. We're told that they chased him to Wayside Church Road where he crashed. Deputies arrested him and his girlfriend right there, Heather Jonas, in connection to that case. Now, originally the duo was wanted for car theft, breaking and entering, and larceny. The Hickory Daily Record reports that Teague is now charged with stealing a car, trying to avoid arrest, probation violations, and numerous other traffic violations. Jonas is also facing more charges, including obstruction of justice. This man will face a judge in just one hour accused of taking photos up women's dresses in Huntersville. Chase Walton is charged with two counts of invasion of privacy. Earlier this week, we showed you these surveillance pictures from inside that Walmart and Target in Huntersville. Police say at both of those stores, Walton took the photos in the aisles, not in the dressing rooms. The city of Charlotte is working to find more money for the final two segments of the Cross Charlotte Trail. The trail will eventually run from University City to the Cabarrus County line. Now, the last two stretches have not even been planned or designed at this point. The city manager is looking at several options, including a pay-go account and debt refinancing to fund those segments. Transportation and recreation options are so important, regardless of whether you live in University area or you live in South Charlotte or East or West. And that's Councilwoman Dimple Ajmera. She's hoping that voters will not need to approve any more bond money to get this project finished. A developer is finally hoping to break ground on the former Eastland Mall site sometime next year. We're told the development will include apartments, shops, and a soccer academy. Of course, back in October, City Council approved reimbursing that developer about $250,000 for some early work. City Council has previously set aside $20 million worth of spending on the site for infrastructure like street lights and sidewalks. Some SunTrust mortgage operations will move to North Carolina as part of that $66 billion merger with BB&T. SunTrust told the Triad Business Journal that it will move its mortgage leadership team in Richmond down to Greensboro, but that will not happen until after the merger is complete. Of course, the new company, we're told, will be headquartered right here in Charlotte. The city already has nearly 82,000 people working in the finance sector. It's not clear how many new banking jobs this merger will create. Lowe's says they plan to hire 2,000 new IT workers. The question is where those jobs will be based, here in Charlotte or possibly down in Dallas, Texas. Lowe's headquarters, of course, is up in Mooresville. The company wants to build a new technology center, they say, and is looking at several sites in the Charlotte area, along with Dallas, Texas. Lowe's got a new CEO last July, and he's made several changes trying to get the company's profit back up. However, their first quarter earnings did not meet expectations on Wednesday. A dental company is moving its headquarters to Charlotte. The Charlotte Business Journal reports that Dent Supply Serona approved that move yesterday. That as well, we're not clear how many jobs will be created, but the city and county did approve $4 million worth of incentives to get that company to move here. The roads and airports, let's face it, they're going to be packed today, folks. A lot of you heading out to travel for Memorial Day weekend. 1.3 million North Carolinians are expected to drive to their destination this weekend. And yes, you are going to see some troopers along the major highways, we're told. Officials say they will be cracking down on dangerous driving and enforcing speed limits today and all weekend long. 615,000 South Carolinians will hit the roads this weekend as well. Of course, millions of people will fly to their Memorial Day destination. Many of those passengers going through Charlotte Douglas Airport, of course. Officials are encouraging flyers to download the airport's new app. That pushes alerts that will let you know about any delays strong storm system that's already caused a lot of damage still moving across the country right now 
13 tornadoes touched down overnight on top of what we already saw this week. Will Reeves joins us now from Jefferson City, Missouri. Cleanup efforts across much of the country this holiday weekend, the result of extraordinary storm activity over the last week. The National Weather Service even confirming a category EF1 tornado touching down in Maryland with 86 mile per hour winds. Wind and rain downing power lines in Virginia. Huge systems in Texas, like this tornado, twisting sharply in just minutes, heading directly for a home and then turning toward a meteorologist for ABC affiliate KOCO, tracking the storm. ABC that. senior meteorologist Rob Marciano is in Missouri, the capital there slammed by tornadoes. The ferocious tornado with enough force to knock over this semi and then go right into this neighborhood. This car dealership hit hard. Brand new vehicles blown into twisted metal. It's just incredible how much heavy damage there is and how nobody died here. I, the only words I can put into this word miracle. And in Oklahoma, along the Arkansas River, rising waters expected to continue through much of the weekend. Record flooding in the state brought on by a week of torrential rain. Since Monday, there have been 97 reported tornadoes in eight states, from Texas all the way up to Maryland. Stormy weather expected to continue this holiday weekend, with potential record flooding in the Midwest and severe weather possible from the Great Lakes all the way into central Pennsylvania. Part of that severe weather caused by this cold air meeting this warm air here. This warm air also bringing us a lot of heat this weekend. We'll time it all out coming up. And putting police officers in a suspect's shoes. Next, the new virtual reality training allowing officers to better understand both sides of every situation. Plus, justice for survivors of sexual assault. We'll explain the new plan to help North Carolina clear out a massive backlog of untested rape kits. Weather on WSOC is driven by Toyota of North Charlotte, I-77, exit 23, where big city low prices are just a click away.
Some police officers are using virtual reality to put themselves in a suspect's shoes. And experts say this approach could help save lives. In many situations, it's difficult for officers to know if the suspect is holding a gun or drugs in their hands, for instance. It can also become tense when officers approach someone with a mental health crisis. The Chicago Police Department is now piloting a new program using virtual reality to train officers. As far as talking to him first, absolutely. You want to start your initial assessment. You want to find out, does he know where he's at? Is he delusional? Is he hallucinating? Is and you... to him, that screwdriver might not be a weapon. Absolutely. It could be a magic wand. It could be a gun to him. It could be anything. The company behind the training, Axon, says their goal is to help police better interact with suspects and avoid deadly force except when needed. Channel 9, of course, is committed to breaking down the stigma surrounding mental health and offering real solutions. Join us for a primetime special, Charlotte's Hidden Crisis, this Wednesday at 8 p.m. We'll share stories from people who have overcome mental health challenges and connect you with potentially life-saving resources. North Carolina has the most untested rape kits in the entire country. They could hold the evidence needed to solve some of the state's worst crimes. Channel 9's Elsa Gillis breaks down the latest demands from the state attorney general. Yes, he is demanding they be tested as soon as possible because he says when they test kits, they solve crimes. In 2018, state investigators learned there were more than 15,000 untested rape kits in the state. Now, Attorney General Josh Stein is pushing for a new bill that would prioritize rape kit testing. He says untested kits represent one of the biggest threats to public safety in North Carolina, and it's essential to protecting our communities. This is an issue we have told you about before. In fact, in February, we reported that after nearly 27 years, CMPD made an arrest in the sexual assault of two young women in North Charlotte. And it was all because of a federal grant given to CMPD to help clear a backlog of untested rape kits, allowing them to test and link DNA evidence. To the rapists, no matter how long ago you committed your crime, we will analyze that case and pursue you until the end of time. Now, Governor Cooper is asking for $6 million to eliminate the backlog of untested kits in his budget. It passed the state house. The Senate is now considering the budget. Back to you. Important story. Thank you, Elsa. The dangerous heat will impact a lot of events this weekend, including Speed Street in Uptown and, of course, the Coca Cola 600 at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Speed Street runs through Sunday in Uptown Charlotte and includes food vendors, concerts, and Lots of family fun. The Coca-Cola 600 itself is set for Sunday at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Charlotte native 21-year-old William Byron sits in the pole position. He is the youngest to ever accomplish that. This is Byron's second Career Cup Series pole win. The race begins at 6 o'clock Sunday night. And it is going to be a cooker. And we're already feeling it right now. Let's head over to meteorologist Jacqueline Shear. Jacqueline, that map has a lot of red on it. Yeah, it absolutely does. And I think it's really important to mention that yesterday, our high temperature throughout the entire day, 86 degrees, and that felt pretty warm out there. Today, we are already at 89 and expected for the temperatures to continue climbing over the next few hours here. So let's take a look at that temperature future cast reading. As we get into 1 p.m., we are already in the 90s, folks, and we'll stay in the 90s for a while. All the way through the afternoon, 8 p.m. is the first time we see our temperature starting with the number 8 again. So we are in this for the long haul. Today, and then again tomorrow, we see a similar story with those overnight temperatures really not dropping that much either. By 1 p.m. tomorrow, back in the low 90s. And then we stay there throughout much of the afternoon into the evening. We really get stuck at 93. And believe it or not, Sunday has the potential to be even hotter. Just by a few degrees, but those few degrees when we get up this high, that really starts to make a difference there. So here's a look at early warning Doppler 9. We're pretty dry all throughout the region here. This is actually likely isn't even making it to the ground. It's likely up in the upper atmosphere where our radar is, but evaporating long before it touches the surface. So you shouldn't expect much relief as far as the rain is concerned. Uh, the clouds either here because we're really not seeing too much cloud cover throughout the next few days. Now tomorrow afternoon, there could be a few showers there. Not enough to change your plans, but again, it just might feel 
a little bit nicer. There's also a slight risk of a weak thunderstorm throughout. It's a very small chance, but it might provide some relief for some folks out there and might be worth planning. But again, that cloud cover, very, very minimal throughout the next few days. And that's something you should be really mindful of as you're enjoying this heat. You'll need a lot of water, but you'll also need a lot of sunblock. That UV index is expected to be very high all throughout the weekend here. And of course, it is Memorial Day weekend, so a lot of folks getting outside. This being the unofficial start to summer, and it uh, definitely will feel like summer out there. So even though it is still May, don't take the temperatures or the sun lightly because both of those things, they can do some serious damage this weekend if you're not careful. Yeah, a lot of good advice in there. Thanks so much, Jacqueline. We'll keep our eye on it all. Coming up, a firefighter still recovering from injuries after a massive fire ripped through that building there. A witness will explain just how quickly that fire escalated. A firefighter is still in the hospital 24 hours after part of this building fell on him. We brought you live pictures yesterday at noon as that fire tore through a strip mall on South Main Street in Kannapolis. Firefighter Stephen Tilly was working to prevent the flames from spreading when that ceiling collapsed. We're told he will be okay. Witnesses say they saw smoke at first and the flames quickly escalated. I was pulling over this way and I heard this boom and it sounded like shotguns going pow, 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 pow. Wow, smoke and water damage impacted a couple of other units in that strip mall. Investigators are still trying to figure out how it all started. Closed captioning is brought to you by Bojangles Famous Chicken and Biscuits. It's bow time.
It's not uncommon to see alligators in the Carolinas, but typically they aren't roaming around in backyards. This gator right here was found behind a home in Charleston yesterday. A neighbor first spotted it and called the homeowner. Thankfully, that gator eventually found its way back towards a nearby pond. There you go. All right, going to be hot, hot, hot. Uh, yeah. Final look at that forecast. Yeah, you know what? Today we're getting into the mid-90s for the first time. It's going to feel very hot, and then we stay there all the way through the rest of that seven-day forecast here. Only a few clouds here and there, so a lot of that direct sunlight, and only a very few showers tomorrow afternoon. So uh, definitely want to layer on that sunblock. Absolutely. Thank you, Jacqueline, and thank you for making Channel 9 your choice for news this midday. Be sure to join everyone back here at 5 o'clock. Have a great day. WSOC TV is a Cox Media Group station. Right now at noon, the dangerous heat wave has arrived, packing temperatures in the mid 90s. How long the intense heat sticks around, especially with several major week, uh, events this weekend. This man just faced a judge accused of kidnapping and assaulting a woman and forcing that nine hour standoff in this Charlotte neighborhood. We'll bring you the latest, plus trying to ease tensions between police and suspects. The new program using virtual reality to train officers on how to defuse situations. You're watching Eyewitness News. We're live at noon.
we start with that dangerous heat in our area. Great to have you with us. I'm Paul Boyd. We're talking about temperatures in the mid 90s for the next seven days. This is a worry for many in our community this weekend, while others will just try to stay cool at a lake, river, or swimming pool. Let's go over to meteorologist Jacqueline Shear. Jacqueline, these temperatures are not normal for May, correct? They are not. You know, we should be uh, about 10, 15 degrees cooler this time of year than what we're seeing. Right now, it's already 89 degrees in Charlotte this lunch hour. A few hours ago, we were already in the 80s this morning, so we're not getting a lot of relief in the morning either. That's something you want to be mindful of throughout the next few days. A lot of folks probably planning and getting their yard work done here ahead of Memorial Day, and really, we're not getting much relief at any time of the day. So 89 degrees right now. As we get into the afternoon, though, of course, getting quite a bit worse. We're talking about those mid 90s by 4 p.m. We hit our high today of 94 degrees. You also can't really expect any relief in the term in terms of rainfall here. We're staying dry all throughout the next few uh, days and the next few hours here as well. Now here's a look at those seven day temperatures. Not much relief on the way anytime soon as we're staying in about the mid 90s all the way through the rest of that seven day forecast. This is one of the hottest and longest stretches of temperatures that we've seen in May. Possibly Possibly it, since records have been uh, keep, have been kept here in the Charlotte area. We're going to take a look at when those rain chances might pop up coming up in just a few minutes. All right, and if you plan on going to the lake this weekend, officers will be patrolling to enforce drinking and boating laws and make sure children are wearing life jackets. You'll see boat patrols on Lake Wiley, Lake Norman, and the Catawba River. Last month, swift water rescue teams from across the state trained along the Catawba River. If you download our app right now, you can keep a close eye on the dangerous heat this weekend. The WSOC-TV weather app is free to download within that Apple and Google Play stores. This man just faced a judge accused of kidnapping and assaulting a woman and causing that nine-hour standoff in South Charlotte yesterday. Chopper 9, of course, flew over the standoff unfolding at the Aurora Station Apartments just off of Sharon Brook Drive. Channel 9's Gene Esposito was in the court.